Was that a knock? Hello, welcome. Come away from the North Atlantic gale into Glynn Castle. Welcome. This is Catherine, my wife, whose ancestral home this is. Come on in. So here we are in Glynn Castle home of the Fitzgerald family who've been settled here since the 1200s. We're in this fabulous hall with the neoclassical plaster ceiling with all the motifs relevant to Ireland, the Shannon, the Fitzgerald family motto, Shannon Abu, their war cry. Shannon Abu! <laughs> and this is the man who built the house in his flashy military uniform, leaning on his cannon in a dashing way. He married an heiress and they built this and had 10 years of high living, dances, parties, before going bankrupt 10 years later. So in here, this is the sort of party room. Summer light streams in from the setting sun over there, and we've had plenty of nights of uh, merriment in this amazingly lit, beautiful pink drawing room. What's the story of this woman here? She's pretty cool. This is Celinda Blennerhassett. Celinda Blennerhassett. I'm always very taken with her saucy pose and glance. She was the only female member of the of Hellfire Club. Of the Limerick Club. Hellfire Club, which was only men allowed except for her, and they got together. It was really a drinking club, I think, and but they got up to all kinds of bad behaviour. Orgiastic behaviour. You can see a little glint in her eye. I yes. Think. She's looking down on us all, thinking, we don't really know how to party like they did <laughs> in 1789. I mean, it did get pretty wild, not just the 18th century, but the 1960s. Mick Jagger know. came and uh, was dumped by Marianne Faithful in this very room. So this is the library. Books lining the library. Actually, not that many books lying in the library, but anyway, a rather comfortable, quiet little room. The nice thing about this room is that you can just relax quietly and not, not be disturbed, because you never know, behind the hidden door, there may always be a fully stocked bar. They're so confusing, these castles, because you're never quite sure what's a wall and what's a door. So we come this way into the dining room, which is filled with more ancestors glaring down at us, saying, what are you doing with this place? This is the cattle rustler. She was known locally as the Ban Tierna. She was a cattle rustler to feed her people in times of famine. The, the female chieftain. Ah, the female chieftain, mm. which is what you are, really. And then this was my great-grandmother, Lady Rachel Wyndham Quinn, and she was a painter and a gardener. She planted a lot of the interesting trees and shrubs that are growing in the garden today. And that's important to me because I am a landscape designer and studied plants and horticulture and design. And so the garden's always been a particular passion for me. So over here is one of my favorite characters. Who's this handsome devil? He was the 25th Knight of Glynn and he was known locally. They all had nicknames and he was called the Knight of the Women. He many liked the ladies, he did, did he? He had many mistresses which he kept, so they say, in these gothicized lodges. And everyone was happy about that. <laughs> no, Maybe not the a... parish priest was not happy. He was denounced from the pulpit. But he didn't care about that. And we've got Brian May, the lead guitarist of Queen, above the fireplace just here. This is my mother's ancestor, who was a judge depicted by Hogarth in some of his prints. And he's really a counterpoint to all these blooming Fitzgeralds that she had to live with all those years. He's a more sober character. He's a more character. sober character who was a, a strict sort of disciplinarian, I think. Very English sounding. So over here is rather is the only flying staircase in Ireland. That's why it's called flying, because it's unsupported. Yes, quite a lot of these that go up the middle and then bifurcate, but this goes the other way around. This bifurcates and then goes yes. up the middle. And Cracked Jack, your ancestor, used to ride his horse up these steps so to me, up say. to bed. Yes, he had a hunting accident and was a bit touched ever since and used to ride his horse up to bed. So we'll ride our horse up here. <laughs> The flying staircase leads up to a Venetian window. This amazing view of the Persian ironwood. Is that what it's called? Yep, very good, yep. <laughs> this is the yellow room, painted in this extremely bright Georgian yellow. My father collected political cartoons of the 19th century, which he had framed in blue. And then it's got fuchsia. My favorite flower is fuchsia, and there is the fuchsia fabric on all the chairs. This is a special room to stay in. This I want to sleep happens, in here. As they say. <laughs> 
This is the biggest bedroom, and it's pretty spectacular. It's got this incredible blue fort poster. I don't like these blinds so much. Everything fades in the light, so you have to put blinds down. Uh -huh. Anyway, this is really where the magic happens. We'll get that in at some point. Is that crack chat? Yes. Let's go in here where we get a bit of light. In the castle room. How does he look? Mad as a stick, looking as barking as ever. He was bonkers. <laughs> Loved gambling, didn't he? Mm. And then burnt all the family papers. Brilliant. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start a whiskey here, and it's going to be called Cracked Jack. This was actually called the lobby, but this is where they actually had dancing. A few was... drinks taken, no mm. doubt. Oh, definitely a few drinks. <laughs> Just stop briefly to see the Irish elk. Now, these are in only the best houses in Ireland. They're how old are they? 10,000 years. They were preserved in bogs, that's why and they're still the... found. Was he a knight of Glynn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, so. That's how long they've been around here. <laughs> so if we go down here, we get to the oldest part of the house, the original part of the house, which was the thatched longhouse. So in the Siege of Glynn of the old castle in 1601, the castle was bombarded and the family had to escape and do as best they can over the next few years and finally settled here, not far from the old castle. And it was here they lived until they added on the 18th century neoclassical mansion. When we were renovating, you can see here that we left it, we found that it's actually built of turf cut from the bog behind Glynn with a bit of cement between and that was it. Amazing, it stays up. We would always have the main house for guests. So we lived down here in this part of the house and had our family life here. My father would cover every inch with local pictures and, and these are amazing. These lines of Protestant wisdom. If it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceable with all men. Which I think for a lot of screaming children is a very good um, proverb to look at. Gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. Exactly. And this is, <laughs> this is Elizabeth, who's been here for 700 years. <laughs> this is a wonderful piece. It's a settle bed. Can you undo that hook? Which would have been in Oh, my God, cabin. I've never seen this. Gosh, you could have sleep in this. A mattress would have been in there. Then the daytime would have gone back to being... Should have put Crack Jack in there. Kept him out of mischief. There's always been said that there's a lot of spirits in this house, though I've never felt it myself. There was a story that there was a ghostly rope would be seen from time to time hanging above the flying staircase, and it was said that a workman who'd been working when it, the, on it when the house was being built had fallen to his death, and that the, um, the ghostly rope was what could, appeared from time to time. <clears throat> We met at university in Trinity in Dublin and when I left I did a walk around Ireland and ended up here in Glynn and I remember coming down the first time coming here and I was walking and then Catherine was coming along in the car and she happened to see me and um, tried to run over me but then once when she missed uh, I then um, managed to get here for the first time and I was immediately enchanted and swore that one day I too would live here. <laughs> no, I didn't. This is what we needed from the start. You could, this is your pointing stick. Come into the garden, Maud. It's raining. It's always raining. <laughs> My father built this wall and the Gothic OG arches and castellations. Look at this. Come and just look at this bit here. Just look at how beautiful that is. How you really get a sense of time passing, lichen growing, ivy creeping, really cool. That would have probably been a, a, a grain store or a hayloft to keep it off the ground. Keep it dry. Mm. So this is the stable yard. This was once filled with horses and doves and pigeons, you see, dove, dovecuts, and, and, and now it's hopefully going to be filled with people. This is where we would like to renovate and have weddings and accommodation. And a shebeen with whiskey drinking going on in there. That's the idea. But it'd be a shame to lose its quiet magic. 
This garden during the war, it went out of use. It was all overgrown. And then my parents in the 70s, they found the old paths, put back the gravel paths, put back the productive plots, laid it out with the spalliated apples, which all blossom in the spring, and planted these topiary shapes of yew to give it structure. It has this wonderful strong axis that draws your eye down to a white painted wooden bench. Oh. Homegrown, slightly ripe. And here, <laughs> as you can see over here further, we have our productive garden with chard and spinach, and we grow lots of um, pot marigolds. Pot? Where? We had chickens in the orchard, you can see up there, but a mink has escaped and came and has, has killed them all, so we want to make sure he's gone. I think we need more mink. Fuchsia is the most beautiful plant, isn't it? And you always think of Ireland, but it's from... It's, it's actually from Chile, but has escaped from gardens and now grows on hedgerows all over the west of Ireland. Here we have a picturesque fuchsia walk, which drops its flowers, so you have this wonderful wash of red. This is a wonderful paper bark birch from the Himalayas, and the children love to peel it off and to store right on it like paper. And on a, a plant hunting trip I went to Mongolia, we saw they wrap the yak butter in this, in this paper. On some of these plant trips that I've been, I would bring back seed and propagate it and plant it in the garden. So I've got collected seed from Pakistan and China and Mongolia. Here we are at an area of the garden which I'm trying to create a sort of tropical, exotic, architectural leafed little enclave. The, this is the Gunnera from Chile. Fantastic umbrella shaped, huge prickly leaves and they're, they're all incredibly invasive so we have to fight to stop them taking over. I've broken it. <laughs> they're supposed to die aren't they? Yes they all die down now so it doesn't to. matter what you do with them. Oh good. This is great western red cedar and it starts amazingly these trees they're called walking trees because they start with one and then as these branches come down to the ground they root the and so they and they root and, and the they old walk. ones die off so they spread out and out further Amazing. and further so these are the babies of the original it's actually a continuum it's a layer upon layer of generations who've all added wonderful different things my grandmother planted that my mother did this my great grandmother planted that tree and i'm learning all about who did what and it's riveting thrilling to be part of that input into into people who've loved the place people who've loved it and cherished it and looked after it and and added to it the castle has always been a center of the community and this is a hotel for 10 years run very successfully by her parents and when it closed when Catherine's father died the morale of the of the whole town goes down a little and people would like to see it open it needs people it needs lots of people and music and people to enjoy it and it's, it's working really well, so we're going to um, continue with that. Because the alternative is it becomes a big corporate hotel like lots of beautiful castles in Ireland, and they sort of lose something. And this is probably, probably the longest solely inhabited house by one family in all Ireland. Is that rubbish? Yes. Thank you for coming to visit Glyn Castle. And we hope you come back to see us again soon. Is that a larch? That's a cedar. That mm. is a cedar. Mm.